anything wrong in this nothing harm they are doing to anybody to the society or maybe you know uh, in fact it's quite fine so no, nobody is doing wrong but what is right so the, the, the this doubt has come to arjuna and arjuna asked okay you are saying so many things total bhagavad gita he has explained about the yoga uh, practices different types of yoga practices then in the previous chapter also he said i am the supreme controller okay if i know that you are supreme controller i will worship you i don't know you are a supreme controller but i have my own belief and with my belief and i am not doing anything against the scriptures but still i have some belief with that belief i am doing on my own ways of devotion what's wrong in this then krishna explained there are different types of faith that is there and uh, what is the destination of the faith that we all have that's what was explained in the 17th chapter okay so it was clearly explained by krishna that if you worship devi devatas you will go to the devi devatas world so if you are eligible and if your worship is you know 100% satisfied by your worshipable devi devatas then you will get a destination of devi devatas or if you worship gos you will go to gos please and uh, if you worship uh, ancestors you will go to ancestors world okay whereas if you worship me you will come to me and this is what clearly krishna told so that means the worship of anybody is not same worship of anything is not same any belief is not same this is what uh, we understood and the beliefs can be in three different types people who are in tamoguna mode of ignorance belief is in some way and people in uh, rajoguna believe in different things people in sattvaguna believe in different things okay so at the end krishna told that you should transcend all these three modes that means you should not be worshiping in sattvaguna you should not be worshiping in rajoguna you should not be worshiping in tamoguna so you should be trans transiting so uh, you you are you should be going beyond these three modes and worship and if you want to worship someone who is beyond these three modes who is that someone there is no one beyond the three modes there is no one beyond the three modes only krishna is beyond three modes okay so if at all you want to worship somebody with which you get a ultimate spiritual benefit you have to worship krishna this is what we understood okay now krishna has explained in this way last 17 chapters so this whole 17 chapters 18 chapters were divided into three parts we have seen initially karma yoga karma yoga section is subdivided into sankhya yoga buddhi yoga then later it comes to nishkama karma yoga then dhyana yoga okay this total section first six chapters covers these four three topics then the next six chapter covers bhakti yoga okay we have seen bhakti yoga 7th chapter to 12th chapter we have seen bhakti yoga then the jnana section started from 13th chapter till 17th chapter we have seen jnana yoga so krishna has started this chapter uh, all these chapters in a systematic way okay uh, so in fact krishna has started speaking from the second chapter onwards in the second chapter he has given the summary of bhagavad gita in the second chapter he has given the summary of bhagavad gita so that's why if you see in the second chapter he told about sankhya yoga sankhya yoga means the philosophy of uh, soul and body okay this is what uh, krishna has spoken then he said in the same chapter you work but when you are working you offer results to me this is what krishna said so there can be two types of offering results to krishna one i wish to work and i want results just for the sake of offering to krishna i will offer to krishna and enjoy the results this is one type of offering okay it's like uh, uh, you like uh, potato curry <laughs> 
but you make a potato curry and offer to krishna and eat <laughs> okay this is called karma yoga but krishna said advanced karma yoga which is called nishkama karma yoga so the difference between karma yoga and nishkama karma yoga is you don't have any desire to enjoy that just because krishna likes it you work you offer to krishna because it is krishna prasada you have it so here also you made potato curry but you have not made potato curry just because you want to enjoy it you know that krishna likes it so you made for krishna you offer to krishna and then you eat it because it's a krishna prasada what is the difference in both there also you made potato curry here also you made potato curry potato fries we'll say instead of curry <laughs> so so there also you offered here also you offered there also you ate here also you ate what is the difference they, both the places it is prasada bhava the intention okay the inner feelings are different so krishna says if you want to change change from inside okay that change should be krishna consciousness be in the krishna consciousness and work okay this is what nishkama karma yoga so then he said become like a sthita prajna okay a sthita prajna means a pure devotee a pure devotee like uh, he has given an example of tortoise so what tortoise does tortoise will you know expand its limbs only when it is required if it feels that there is any threat from outside world it will pull the limbs into the shell and it will protect itself so in the just same way we also have to use our senses only when it is required not every time so we should not be aiming for sense gratification all the time with our senses and we should be like a tortoise okay if the, the the sense gratification is a threat for our life sense gratification is the real threat for our, for us so krishna is telling sense gratification is not the motive for anybody's life so be like a sthita prajna this is what krishna told okay that means krishna has touched upon sankhya yoga krishna has touched upon karma yoga krishna has touched upon nishkama karma yoga krishna has touched upon bhakti yoga in second chapter that's why it's called summary of bhagavad gita second chapter is summary of bhagavad gita just like how we all are working maybe if uh, your boss asked you to present your uh, you know quarterly report or monthly report or whatever weekly report if we prepare a presentation and in the first slide what we do we will give the agenda and the second third fourth fifth slides what we'll do we'll put the details of each bullet item that we mentioned in the agenda right in the agenda if you mention five topics that i'm going to cover in this presentation then each topic we will in detail discuss in the next slides okay so then what happens so in the same way like how we present krishna also presented first slide second chapter the agenda okay now from the third chapter onwards till the 17th chapter he has spoken in detail about whatever he has told in the agenda each chapter covers some topic he mentioned in the first uh, second chapter that krishna has spoken now the 18th chapter 18th chapter is conclusion so we also conclude right so that means in the conclusion we don't learn anything new in the conclusion we recap what we learned and we conclude example let us say you have um, your uh, son or daughter wanted to go for some higher education okay and they don't know which stream they have to go what uh, subjects they have to select okay because they are young in the age they are not seen the whole life and they don't have experience they don't know where the career opportunities will be more they just think with their own feelings that you know i want to become astronaut i want to become doctor i want to become engineer i want to become chartered accountant i want to become x y z 
वट एवर दे फील इट इज नॉट मैटर फॉर दम वेदर दे कैन परसू ए गुड कैरियर इन दैट स्ट्रीम आर नॉट राइट दे डोंट इवन नो वेदर द जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज विल बी देर इन इन द फील्ड ऑफ एजुकेशन दैट दे आर सेलेक्टिंग दे डोंट नो दे डोंट नो दिस इज सिंपली because they are attracted for air, air hostess let us say <laughs> so they'll say i want to become air hostess they don't know that they have to clean the cups okay <laughs> when they become air hostess it is just like a waiter <laughs> there is nothing difference we are just attracted we don't know what is right what is wrong we don't know we, because we are all at a tender age we don't know what what is right okay then for such a people as a parent what will you do you will try to convince them you'll try to tell them okay this is the one option that you have for your education all the options you will introduce and you will say career opportunities in each option right you will say career opportunities in each option and uh, you might be getting a good salary top most paid companies you might be getting but how difficult it is to get and how many people of you know the members that who have studied can get that job okay nobody knows so yes ias is great ias uh, if you if you study ias you will be getting a uh, good respected position but how many people who have studied ias uh, can get into the that position okay the number of positions are very less you may be liking to become a public servant but even if you do a hard work it is almost uh, impossible to get it okay for that you need to have a 200% determination you have to have confidence on yourself and then you should demonstrate that confidence in the past and then say that i can do this and i will achieve it 100% and if you want to become an ias and you are studying it and you should become ias not irs ifs or something else <laughs> okay so so these all things parents will tell you may be liking to become ias but this is the difficulty in becoming an ias if you still want you study and i will facilitate for that okay or maybe a person want to become a doctor okay for uh, studying a doctor after studying a doctor also how difficult uh, the life after you become doctor okay i think mata ji is an example mata ji son wanted to study engineer but uh, mata ji suggested him to go for doctor as a parent then he respected uh, mata ji's uh, thing and mata ji is regretting now <laughs> today <laughs> saying uh, why i told you to become a doctor i could have not okay huh? Uh, no timings <laughs> no timings so sometimes mata ji thinks uh, morning i can see my son he will not come by morning he will she will wait 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 till afternoon she will wait and she will go to bed and by that time he will come and he will have lunch by the time he, she gets up he will go <laughs> again so maybe once in a week maybe mata ji will see her son <laughs> so that is the problem so when we we are we are actually ready we, when we are actually studying that we don't know all these things and we don't choose certain courses or certain uh, stream of education by knowing everything of about it okay we just for the sake of doing we will do it so as a parent it is our responsibility to explain all these things okay what is good what is bad if you become ias what is good what is bad if you become doctor what is good what is bad if you become engineer these things we have to explain as a parent so in the same way krishna also explained karma yoga nishkama karma yoga arjuna's position we know okay just before starting krishna speaking so arjuna's position what was the arjuna's position he was bewildered he does not know what to do and he does not know what is good what is bad and he is not able to stand his legs are shivering his body is you know his hairs are standing and his heart is weakening and he could not even hold the gandiva bhav and he dropped it he just he just can't stand on his feet and he just fell on the uh, you know chariot 
and he says my mental state is so that i i am not able to take any decision i even if i am not able to hold the gandhi baba a warrior standing in the war field not holding the gandhi baba what does it mean so he is before even starting he is giving up right that is the situation arjuna has so start of the uh, you know actual you know action he has given up and he said he accepted the uh, he accepted that he will not win and he said i will go and beg on the streets i don't want to fight and he explained so many things the reason for why he does not want to fight so some of the reasons we discussed okay saying that killing my own people is a sinful activity okay and uh, um and the ladies become all alone and they and the, the progeny gets corrupted okay so so many reasons he said okay and it is very you know uh, it is he says i am not interested in getting the kingdom after killing all these many people okay so that means he believes something is right according to his own knowledge whatever he has he thinks something is right something is wrong but who correct it what is right what is wrong so then arjuna did not decide that whatever i am thinking is right then what did he do he surrendered to krishna then he changed the relationship between arjuna and krishna and he said you are no more my relative you are no more my friend you are my guru okay i am surrendering to you whatever you say i will listen to it now you guide me what is right then krishna has told everything just like a parent just like a guru everything he told now krishna has given options just like how a parent gives an options to his son then at the end what will his like parent this is my opinion okay this is my opinion my opinion is that you may study anything but as soon as you come out of the college you should get a job <laughs> or before even coming out of the college you should get a job with a good salary good pay okay and respectable position in a ac room <laughs> okay and you should be going to office by car coming back by car okay and um, and after you come back uh, uh, from office you are no more going to touch your laptop <laughs> okay such a job you should get that means 8 hours means 8 hours only you should work and that 8 hours also after you work you should get handsome payment <laughs> okay so for that what you should study you should study some x course okay if you can if you can go for this course your life will be easy getting job will be easy getting paid more is easy and you will get more opportunities also to get the job okay this is how we tell right after we tell that if our children say uh that you know no 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 i want to become lawyer i want to become collector i want to be what will we do what will we say we say as you wish <laughs> but whatever i want to tell i told you do whatever is right you think now okay because now there will be some basis for the children to decide upon okay we have given so much knowledge so much gyan that will help the children to decide what is right what is wrong after that if they decide to go any stream that they want they must have thought through all the nitigities and then taken the decision okay so that's why now in the 18th chapter krishna is going to tell about the same thing so after telling everything he will conclude his judgment he is conclude i told you so many things but what i am thinking is this okay always we 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 sometimes we regret right I, i could have heard about i could have listened to my parents otherwise my life could have been in different way we will be thinking so now krishna being a supreme father and he is concluding bhagavad gita and he is telling his own judgment what we have to do what is the essence that we need to take from bhagavad gita that's what krishna is giving so now whatever is our situation after we take suggestion from our parents or from our guru 
the situation should change right so if we are not able to work we should be able to work if we have given up we should regain the energy and start doing it this is what we have to do now for the whole 17th chapter if you see arjuna never said till now that i will start fighting because in the first chapter he said i will not fight in the whole 17th chapter he was continuously listening what krishna is telling and now what arjuna will tell that is most important because the decision of arjuna is going to be influenced by what krishna has spoken for last 17 chapters right so if 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 arjuna takes some decision that means he, he in the in the before he start listening he was completely given up state okay he, he could not even stand now we will see what is the change in arjuna after knowing this so this is what arjuna situation krishna was standing arjuna is sitting because arjuna could not even stand and uh, the gandiva bows you know just fallen so now in this state towards giving the conclusion arjuna has asked some questions to krishna okay now before i take some decision i want to understand some more things in clarity okay then he he asked in the first verse itself first shloka itself arjuna asked uh, what is right renunciation is right or the renounce renounced order is right the difference between the renunciation and the refer, renounced order is uh, renounced order is like uh, sanyasa okay sanyasa sanyasi you know right sanyasi sanyasi does not do anything okay even for his food he will not work okay even to take care of his body he will not do any activity that is called sanyasa and the renouncing means it is giving up tyaga we, we call it as tyaga okay so then arjuna is asking whether renouncing is better, better or renounced order is better so now krishna has told for that in the second verse see rena- see he has clearly defined the difference between uh, uh, renounce and renounced order okay he said in 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 case of renouncing you will renounce the results not the activity you have to work but don't expect the result this is called renouncing anything that you are doing you are doing not for you not for your sense gratification so if you can do like that it is better you go ahead and do in that way means krishna in, act in krishna consciousness this is what krishna has told okay and in the renounced order you will not be doing anything you will be completely giving up the action also you are not working you are if you are not working there is no result so just for not interested in results uh, if i don't want something why i should work this is our general feeling right krishna says no you have to work no matter whether you like or you don't like the results you have to work that means what krishna is giving at the end of bhagavad gita we should not think that we should become sanyasi we should become vairagi okay we should give up all family activities or we should leave our wife we should leave our children and we should go uh, to forest and then wear some kashaya and then saffron dress and then hold one mala and then do japa this is not what krishna is expecting us to do that's why krishna said don't go for renounced order because it is impossible for anybody to be without working it is impossible even for a sanyasi don't think that he is not working okay for him to live at least he has to breathe right he is doing activity so for him to do prachar he has to walk he has to go to places and he has to uh, do the publicity right so he is doing all these things that means even in a even for a person who is in a renounced order also is working so there is nothing like renounced order okay the only thing that you have to do is you renounce your results not the work this is what krishna concluded in this chapter that's why the in the conclusion the chapter name we mentioned as the the perfection of renunciation 
okay the perfection of renunciation now this is the knowledge okay this is the knowledge so people renounce but there are many ways of renouncing we don't know so somebody says uh, i don't want to eat uh, what is that bitter gourd i don't want to eat bitter gourd but what is the internal feeling of why i don't want to eat bitter gourd because it will be bitter or because uh, i like it more so i don't want to eat it because it has become an addiction for me okay there are different uh, you know uh, mental state before you take a decision that means renouncing of the results is right but while renouncing you should have a knowledge how to renounce what to renounce is also important so for that krishna has spoken some verses in 18th chapter so krishna is telling renounce can be in three types one in goodness knowledge knowledge in goodness knowledge in passion knowledge in ignorance okay one undivided spiritual nature is seen in all living entities so first of all the knowledge that you are having we will see uh, the re- renunciation also will be in three different modes we we will understand once we understand what type of knowledge we have because if we have a knowledge in tamoguna our uh, renunciation also will be in tamoguna if we have a knowledge in you know rajoguna our renunciation also will be in rajoguna so if we have a knowledge in sattvaguna our uh, renunciation also is in sattvaguna right so the shastras are there in fact shastras are there in tamoguna shastras are there in uh, rajoguna shastras are there in uh, sattvaguna also so unfortunately we read some shastras which are in tamoguna and we say that it is mentioned in shastras so i am doing it <laughs> but if you have a full knowledge then you will not think in that way okay so what knowledge is see tamoguna shastras are meant for people in tamoguna okay but if you are in tamoguna is that helpful for you to spiritually advance no so samoguna shastras are not meant for people who want to really advance in uh, spiritually okay or if they want to travel back to godhead okay so tamoguna shastras are not helpful even rajoguna shastras are not helpful even sattvaguna shastras are also not helpful so what we need is the shastra which is in vishuddha sattvaguna okay true mode of uh, goodness vishuddha sattva guna that is shrimad bhagavatam okay shrimad bhagavatam is uh, uh, is not attracted by people in sattva guna rajo guna and tamo guna shrimad bhagavatam is attracted by people uh, like paramahamsas paramahamsas are not in uh, any of these three modes okay paramahamsas are in or beyond these three modes that's why uh, paramahamsa will like bhagavatam paramahamsa's goal is different from the people who are in these three gunas paramahamsa's goal is to attain krishna paramahamsa's goal is to get mukti they don't want to get dharma artha kama they want to get moksha okay so people think that anything that we do for dharma artha kama is also right but that is right but when you are in these modes right so instead of you become a dacoin or some you know um, killer or something at least you become some somebody's devotee okay it may be a ghost or it may be uh, a, a demigod or it may be a ancestor or it may be a cinema actor become devotee of somebody so that at least your nature will change okay then gradually you will elevate to the spiritual path then you can come to uh, beyond modes otherwise you cannot so that's why these shastras are also given for their purpose for them not for us okay so the shastra in tamoguna shastra in rajoguna they worship kali they worship uh, you know uh, demigods they worship so many other devatas grama devatas okay there were so many because we we have been hearing it from you know parents 
grandparents that you know it's our tradition okay it's it's been happening we have been worshiping so and so devata <laughs> so you also should worship we are worshiping we don't know whether we get real spiritual benefit out of it or not we don't know okay that is because the kind of belief that we have that's why krishna is telling such beliefs will not help you okay that's why you should uh, transcend all these modes then only you will be situated in uh, you know spiritual platform if you are not in a spiritual platform uh, you are doing just like how others are doing and it will create a karmic reactions even a punya karma is creating a karmic reaction just like how a papa karma creates a karmic reaction okay you have to suffer even when you do a punya karma you may be you know it may uh, the, the suffering you may not be understanding the suffering is like you know just coming back to this material world and getting a life in a rich family uh, is we might be thinking that we are not suffering but uh, can there be uh, can there be anyone who is not suffering being in rich family everybody is suffering everybody is suffering because the world is a suffering world dukkhalaya so krishna mentioned so it is dukkhalaya so when you are in dukkhalaya and you are thinking you are enjoying we are in illusion right we are in illusion that's what krishna said that's why in the mode of goodness the knowledge that we will have is like we will think everyone is same we don't differentiate between people female male boy elder or maybe animal tree this difference we don't see when you come to that stage of knowledge then you will feel like every body is a temple of paramatma okay paramatma is residing in me paramatma is residing in you paramatma is residing in everybody if i can realize that if i can feel if i as soon as i look at you i do a namaskar to you right because i respect you because uh, there is a paramatma sitting in you so the, the the respect that i am giving it to you is not to your body not to your soul it is to the paramatma who is in your body so if you understand this then you should do the same thing when you see whether a person is in poverty or person is rich right everybody is hard there is a paramatma and even when you see an animal you will do the same thing because the animal is also living entity it it, has, it also has a different type of body and that animal also is having paramatma in it so then what happens you will be respecting everybody you will not be seeing anybody as enemy vasudhaika kutumbam it becomes like vasudhaika kutumbam we are one, we we all have one father we all are members of one family okay when you when you can come to that stage of knowledge that is that kind of knowledge is called knowledge in goodness knowledge in goodness okay so krishna is telling that from 20th verse to 22nd verse knowledge in goodness knowledge in passion knowledge in ignorance and what is knowledge in ignorance in every different body there is a different type of living entity this is what we differentiate right she is a female she is a male so at least uh, we don't uh, equally treat everyone basically that's why we think that killing a human being is a offense killing an animal is not an offense right we kill animal we don't even think twice we don't even think once because we all think that animal has no life and we all think that animal does not we are, we might be not thinking that animal wanted to live like just like how we want to live right and uh, can you be daring to kill one human being just like how you kill one chicken no we don't because we see a chicken different from a human being okay a goat different from a human being but the fact is they also want to live and they are also having a life they are also there just because of the uh, past karmas that they have done and if you kill without allowing that animal to 
suffer from the previous karmas when it will get liberated right it also should get a human body in the next life at least for that it has to take the karmic reactions that it has done in the past life we are not letting it happen we are killing it in the half of its life and we don't for, what for we are doing that we are doing that for our sense gratification we want to eat we want to enjoy and for our enjoyment we are killing but the nature law is very strict it is not like our traffic laws traffic signals you might be crossing a signal and escaping from the traffic police and you think that okay nothing happened to me but nature law is not like that don't think that you did a mistake and that mistake will not be counted that mistake will not be you know coming back to you as a reaction nature law is very strict if you kill one animal you have to take birth to get killed by that animal in the next life that is the nature law in this life if we kill 100 animals and we should take 100 times birth and get get and get killed by 100 those animals and those animals will become human beings and they will kill you and that time you will become chicken okay and this is nature law and it is very strict okay and uh, we don't know all these things because we don't know sattvic knowledge we don't know the knowledge that we have is not in sattva guna it is in rajoguna or tamoguna that's why we all are thinking anything can be done because in tamoguna shastra it is told okay see if you have a desire to eat right uh, shastra tells okay if you have a desire to eat eat it in a specific way okay offer an animal in yajna cut it and eat it so that at least that animal that is getting killed by you will get liberated or it will get a human body immediately that is what shastra is telling while you are enjoying for your sense gratification you are just not killing anybody or anything any animal as and when you want shastra is regulating that killing when shastra is regulating that killing what are we thinking we are misunderstanding it and thinking that shastra is allowing us to kill but shastra is not allowing us to kill if you want to kill you will eat all seven days of the week right but shastra is telling do it on certain day and offer it to the yajna in the yajna and then eat it so that at least instead of getting a sins your sins will be reduced not that you don't get sin but your sins will be reduced this is what shastra is telling that's a kind of knowledge in ignorance okay in the knowledge in one is attached to one kind of work as all in all without knowledge of truth and which is very meager we don't know we are just blind we don't know what is right what is wrong everybody is doing we will also do okay this is how we do this is all ignorance next <coughs> happiness the kind of happiness that we get is also three types okay in the first thing generally there are spiritual activities how many of us will feel that you know the moment we start the spiritual activity is giving us happiness okay generally we don't if i ask you to start chanting <laughs> you will start hare krishna okay prabhu ji is telling to chant hare krishna maha mantra okay i will take a mala today and i will chant one mala i will do then i will think why did prabhu ji told me to do this what is the need for this what is the need for me to do all these things what enjoy is that i am getting now why should i really do this is what we think okay so the actual bliss of remembering krishna we don't feel at the start okay so at the start we feel like it's a poison but as you progress as you continue to do it then you will feel like it is a nectar and at some state you can't live without remembering krishna you can't live without chanting the name of krishna that day you will feel like uh, you you will feel like uh, you know, guilty what 
what am i doing the whole day i did not get 5 minutes for chanting hari krishna what did i achieve this kind of guiltiness we get when we are used for this that's why the happiness in goodness in the beginning it is just like a poison but towards the end it is just like a nectar okay so all the spiritual activities if you take at the beginning it will be like that only we don't like but once you are used then we like it then we are we will be we will not be able to live without doing it that is the happiness that we get we get happiness on in doing kirtan we get happiness in dancing in front of krishna we get happiness in chanting hare krishna we get happiness in offering flowers to krishna we get happiness in meeting devotees every sunday like this okay so but initially we feel it's a troublesome right it's a troublesome who will come in this rain right who will come in let's take a break this is what we feel right so whereas when it comes to passion it means in rajoguna which is derived from the contact of the senses with their objects see as soon as we see something we get a happiness we feel happy right a person who he is more interested in sweets so while walking on the street he will get a sweet smell from the sweet shop <laughs> right so if he is not thinking about that probably he will just go but the moment when he see the smell he will feel like eating it and he will go and have some sweets or some kachodi or some samosa or some pani puri or something if you don't see you don't even think of eating it but if you see you will feel like eating it that means what is happening our senses are coming in contact with the sense object the moment when you see the sense object your senses will desire to have it right your mouth will water when you see the mango your mouth will water when you see the sour item right if you don't see that it won't no, nothing nothing no no change in you right that's what that that kind of happiness is uh, happiness in goodness sorry uh, passion okay that means you feel to enjoy it only when you see it when you touch it when you feel it okay this is the kind of enjoyment and the happiness in ignorance oh sorry which appears like a nectar at the start but it becomes a poison at the end obviously right the moment when you see pani puri you want to eat it when the moment when you see samosa you want to eat it but after eating what will happen okay it will start creating you know abnormal reactions in our body <laughs> okay constipation or maybe motions or maybe fever or x y z vomitings x y z okay some problems will start a sugar patient is tempted for a sweet what will happen sugar will increase sugar problems body problems health problems then you will regret okay i i got tempted for sweet i ate and it has caused so many so much problem for me so later when you are suffering you will feel like it's like a poison okay but initially while you eating eating it's like a nectar okay that's what and uh, and uh, and uh, while eating also even when you eat spicy foods tasty foods what will happen you will enjoy while eating but because of the too much masala too much spiciness although you are enjoying while eating later it will start creating uh, problems for the body okay this is what the enjoyment that we are having in the passion then ignorance happiness in ignorance which is blind to the self realization which is delusion from beginning to end so in the in the beginning also it will be like a poison and in the end also it is like a poison <laughs> while having it as also in the poison but after having it also it is like a poison like uh, people in tabuguna they go to bars right um i don't know what taste that uh, alcohol will be <laughs> okay while while drinking also they will close eyes they will close nose <laughs> right they don't like but still they drink but after the drink also they will fall on the street right 
so they will think that the road is the bed so that is the situation so um, and there is no self realization in such type of happiness right so that is the thing so so that's why at the beginning also it is a poison at the end also it is a poison okay which is a delusion from the beginning to the end which arises from the sleep laziness and illusion okay people in get, people want to get happiness in sleep how many <laughs> so many right <laughs> so they think that you know allow me for sleeping another one hour today is sunday <laughs> <laughs> allow me to sleep for another 2 hours because i have nothing to do okay so this happiness is uh, something that we are enjoying right that is because of tamoguna tamoguna factor is there in everyone don't think that you know people are in pure sattvaguna or sattvaguna only tinge of tamoguna tinge of rajoguna is there even in a person who is in sattvaguna okay okay sleep but don't sleep for one hour sleep for one minute or two minutes extra <laughs> to enjoy the sleep okay right next so krishna after giving this knowledge and he mentioned in the renunciation also uh, actually i have not put those slide uh, that slide i missed it but i'll just give you brief of brief about renunciation so in the in the renunciation also renunciation also can be there in goodness passion and ignorance okay so if you are renouncing you are renouncing just for the spiritual advancement it is called it is in the uh, it is in the mode of goodness okay let us say i don't want to eat on the day of ekadashi i am giving up eating anything that is also renunciation i am renouncing food on that day what for i am doing that for me to think about krishna i don't want to utilize any resources for my bodily enjoyments i want to engage fully in spiritual uh, you know practices i want to think about krishna i want to work for krishna i i don't want any material activity on that day if i start eating my body body needs will increase right i might have to uh, you know prepare a food to eat and i have to clean vessels all these things we have to do and that time is also waste for a person who wants to advance in spiritual spiritual life okay so he want to renounce that for one day at least in 15 days on the day of ekadashi we do that or on the appearance days and disappearance days of acharyas or maybe janmashtami shri rama navami or some festival days we are fasting right we are fasting to reduce our body needs and to increase our spiritual needs and to be with you know krishna to be more thinking about krishna so that's why that's why you should be close to god on the day when you renounce your body needs right whereas some people will also renounce just because it's a pain for them just because they don't like okay you have a fever your mother will give you some kashaya how many of us like to have kashaya we don't we don't want because it will be bitter okay it will not be any taste and we don't like so we we would not want to take it so that kind of renunciation is because we are not comfortable to have it so generally we say renounce something when you go to kashi why people say to renounce something when you go to kashi i don't know how many of you are aware that you know when you go to kashi you have to give something you have to leave something okay which you, huh? which you like which you like ah uh, but generally what people do <laughs> which they don't like <laughs> they will renounce it is easy right so why people say what you have to renounce which you like is because that liking is causing an addiction and that addiction is taking us away from god so any addiction is a obstruction for spiritual progress it may be tea coffee or it may be anything okay any addiction is not good for spiritual progress that's why people who want to progress spiritually will not get addicted to anything even in the spiritual activities sometimes we might be thinking that i will be chanting only when my wife sits along with me okay or maybe i will be chanting only 
when I have this kind of environment. And if I don't have that environment, I will not chat. If I don't have my wife sitting with me, I will not chat. Or if I don't have a particular devotee sitting with me, I will not chat. Okay. This is also one kind of addiction. And that addiction is also not good for spiritual progress. Addiction, it may be spiritual or it may be material, is not good for spiritual progress. Okay. So that's why intox we should that is also an intoxication, right? I'll be happy if uh, something is there with me. So any kind of intoxication is not good. We might be thinking, what is problem having coffee? What is problem having tea? Okay. Because it's not a wine, right? It's a it's made with milk with some caffeine in it, right? How does it matter? Actually, what is the need of coffee for your body? What is the need of tea for your body? There is no need for need of anything for you. Go and ask the scientists who have done the research on this. Okay, they say it is just addiction. It is a mental, uh, you know, situation. Psychologically, we are thinking that we need coffee so that we will be relieved. It is just a psychological feeling. But really, coffee or tea is not giving you the relief. Psychologically, you are something better position. When you have coffee, when you have tea, then you will feel like you are relieved from your pain. Maybe headache or maybe stress or something that you have. You think that I have to have a cigarette, I have to have a, a coffee, I have... Some people will have tea, some people will go out, some people will eat more, some people will drink more. Okay, This is all addiction. Even coffee tea is also an addiction. That is also an intoxication. So that's why Prabhupada says, don't be intoxic to anything. That intoxication will not help you progressing spiritually. The person in the spiritual path should not be intoxic of anybody, anything. Even it may be a per, for a person or it may be for a thing, you should not be intoxic. Even the renunciation in Tamoguna, they don't know anything. They will die also for the society. They will put a petrol on them and then they will put a fire on them. And we have seen so many such people suiciding themselves. What for? For my leader. How many people? For leader. When some celebrity died, no? The followers also die. Right? This is ignorance. Complete ignorance. People don't understand the value for their body. They die for somebody who has done nothing for them. And that, that, that death also will not give any progress for them. Spiritual progress. A person who is really thinking of getting a spiritual progress, he should not be doing renunciation in ignorance. Okay. So, that's why Krishna is telling, renounce for me. That means you work and offer results to me. This is what Krishna is telling. Renounce does not mean that stop working. Renounce means work for me. W work for me means Krishna. Not work for ourself. Work for Krishna. This is the renunciation. So we might be saying, okay, you are saying uh, we have to control our needs. We have to give up our basic needs also. Then we might be thinking that, you know, there is a monkey in the forest. Monkey does not wear clothes. Okay. And monkey does not eat non veg. Monkey does not uh, drink coffee tea. And uh, monkey eats whatever is available for that day. It only eats fruits, vegetables. Can we say monkey also renounced? No. So that's why such type of renunciation is not recommended by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. That renunciation is called Markata Vairagya. Markata means monkey. Okay. So that's why just uh, leaving your home place, leaving your house, leaving your body, sorry, uh, your wife, children and going to some forest just like how monkey is living in forest without house uh, is not spiritual progress. You are also equal to monkey. There is no difference. Okay. So the renunciation should be there in the thoughts. Renunciation should be there in the mind, not just in the physical appearance. That's why renounce in goodness. Not in passion and not in 
uh, ignorance. That's what Krishna mentioned. Then, then he switched to the next topic. Okay, the knowledge is important, he said. And with that knowledge, he asked us to renounce. That is most important. Now, Krishna is telling a confidential knowledge. The more confidential knowledge, that knowledge will help us keep in Sattvaguna. That knowledge will help us see everyone equal. So that's what he said. Ishwara Sarva Bhuta Nam Hrudeshe Arjuna Tishtati Brahmayan Sarva Bhutani Yantra Rudani Mayayam Tameva Sharanam Gacha Sarva Bhavena Bharatam Tatrasadhat Param Shantim Stanam Prapsya Shaswatam Itite Jnana Makyatam Guhyat Guhyat Guhyataram Mayam Vimrusyaita Dathe Shena Yadhe Chasitada Kuru. The Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart. O Arjuna, and is directing the wandering of all living entities who are seated as on a machine made of the material energy. Ocean of Bharata, surrender unto him utterly. By his grace, you will attain the transcendental peace and the supreme and eternal abode. Thus, I have explained to you the knowledge still more confidential. Deliberate on, on this fully and then do what you wish to do. Okay, Krishna is telling, do it. Krishna is not telling to do it like how I said. <laughs> Krishna is telling, I am giving you this knowledge. Krishna is telling, a Supreme Lord is there in everyone's heart along with the living entity. And that Supreme Lord, who is that Supreme Lord? He is a Paramatma. He is a Paramatma. Krishna is different and Paramatma is different. Please understand. Paramatma is an expansion of Krishna. Krishna is expanding as Paramatma and sitting in everyone's heart. Okay, that means partial expansion of Krishna is Paramatma. So we cannot equal Paramatma with Krishna. Okay, Paramatma is a partial expansion of Krishna. Krishna expanded himself as a Paramatma and sitting in the heart of everyone. So now what Krishna is telling? You understand this and surrender to him. Okay. That means when you are meditating, you should meditate on whom? You should meditate on Paramatma. Not on your breath, not on sound, not on light, not on your body parts, not on anything else. Surrender onto Paramatma, he says. That's why all Dhyana Yogis, they meditate on Paramatma. Meditating on Paramatma is not equal to meditating on Krishna. Meditating on Krishna is in Bhakti Yoga. Meditating Paramatma is Dhyana Yoga. Got it? Dhyana Yoga is not topmost Bhakti. Bhakti Yoga is a topmost Bhakti. You understand? So we need to understand these differences, small, small differences. Otherwise, we, we, we don't uh, you know, aim for what we actually want with our practices. Okay? We think... We want to aim something. I want to become an IAS officer, but I am not studying what is required to become an IAS officer. I want to become a doctor, but I have, to, I have taken a mathematics. Is it possible for us to become a doctor if I, become an, if I study an engineering course, electronics or electrical or computer science? It is not possible. So you want to understand, first of all you should understand what is your goal of spiritual practice. Okay. It's not just blind uh, faith or blind uh, devotion that we should do. Bhakti is not moda bhakti. We should not be doing bhakti with ignorance. Okay. So, have knowledge. Ha set a target. And for that target, what is the right practice you should understand? And that practice you should do. If your bhakti goal is getting an eternal position, in the eternal abode with Krishna, then you should not be doing all these uh, 
uh, you know devotional activities that we are doing monday one devata tuesday another devata thursday one devata and we fast every days some days no reason one baba this baba that baba stop that this is not going to give you any spiritual practice help this is not going to give you any spiritual advancement going to that baba this baba helpless hopeless because of the knowledge that we have we don't have a knowledge that is told by krishna in bhagavad gita right that is the reason we are misleaded misguided and our bhakti is going in different directions not in one direction okay so this different direction bhakti is not going to take you to the destination where you want so krishna is telling surrender unto me surrender unto paramatma this is one level of surrender you are not surrendering here in this verse krishna is not telling you to surrender to himself he is telling you to surrender to paramatma that's why it is called a more confidential knowledge and when you can become a servant of paramatma or when you are a follower of paramatma then your knowledge is little advanced then you will understand surrendering of krishna later okay and in the next verse krishna says surrender to me okay this is more confidential next he will say most confidential knowledge okay more confidential better or most confidential better which one is more important most confidential is important that's why krishna is telling so whatever i am telling you just understand and with your knowledge what is right what is wrong you think now after uh, from the basis of what i told you think of what is right what is wrong and then take a decision this is what krishna is telling and next krishna is going to tell most secret thing just like how a teacher tells 100 students and after telling 100 students there will be some students very dear to him okay teacher uh, who, who, i don't know who is teacher here if anybody is teacher they can share their experiences okay out of 100 students one or two students will be more close to teacher and he is delivering for the 100 students and for that one student is different or not okay he will tell at the end he will tell do you understand or not and even when i am looking at i might be looking at that person more compared to other persons because they are more attentive they are listening more they are adopting more they are implementing more for them we give more attention as a teacher teacher will also give attention to the person who is showing more interest right and who is more dear to him so that's why krishna is telling here because you are my very dear friend i am speaking to you my supreme instruction supreme instruction means there is no instruction better than that there is no instruction better than that supreme instruction the most confidential knowledge of all hear this from me for it is your benefit when i am telling something people might be thinking that what is the benefit that you have while you are telling this to me <laughs> right so if somebody comes and gives you some suggestion before you accept that suggestion what do you think what is this person going to be benefited with this right we we think that because that is our nature that's why krishna is telling after telling everything i am telling you especially for you i am telling you because you are my close friend not for everybody only for you like how a mathematics teacher will come and tell some extra formulas or shortcut methods to the intelligent student <laughs> special student or dear student close student right that's why whoever is close to krishna can get this what he is going to tell in the next verse but those who don't get that they are not close to krishna they are not dear to krishna they can never become dear to krishna because krishna at the end of the chapter he is giving judgement and special instruction he is giving and that instruction is a supreme instruction and for a special people only who are those special people you are my dear friend close one you are close even you you will you, you may be you may not be sharing certain secrets with your father mother but you will be sharing the secrets with friends right 
sometimes because you are not comfortable sharing with parents but you can open yourself with friends so that's why krishna is telling such a secret which you can share with your friend okay what is that secret manmana bhava madhakto madhya jimam namaskuru mame vaishyasi satyam te prati jane priyosi me sarva dharman parityachha mame kam sharanam vraja aham tvam sarva papebhyo moksha ishyami ma suchah so anybody I, I want all of you also to read. Manmana bhava madhbhakto madhya jimam namaskuru. Manmana bhava madhbhakto madhya jimam namaskuru. Mame vaishyasi satyam te prati jane priyosi me. Mame vaishyasi satyam te prati jane priyosi me. Sarva dharman parityadhyā māme kam sharanam vraja Sarva dharman parityadhyā māme kam sharanam vraja Aham tvam sarva pāpebhyo moksha ishyāmi mā sucha Aham tvam sarva pāpebhyo moksha ishyāmi mā sucha Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me and offer your homage unto me thus you will come to me without fail i promise you this because you are my very dear friend okay krishna is telling clear instruction supreme instruction become my devotee worship me this is the ultimate dharma we all think that there are so many dharmas worshiping so many devotees so many devatas is dharma or maybe you know manava seva is a dharma or uh, you know distributing books is a dharma or distributing uh, maybe food is a dharma or distributing x y z is a dharma is what we are thinking because we that is not ultimate dharma that is dharma but that is not ultimate dharma that is not supreme instruction that krishna is giving us okay but uh, if you don't change your consciousness and you do all these things that is not going to help you getting the spiritual advancement you only might be accumulating some punya some piousness you will be accumulating and that piousness helps you in getting a better life in your next janma okay next life but you will not be getting krishna you cannot be reaching krishna's uh, abode with uh, the kind of dharmas that we think today we are having so many religions right we are having so many religions so many castes so many types of people and every religion is actually worshiping in certain ways somebody worship some god somebody worship some other god christians muslims hindus within hindus again different types worshipers of kali worshipers of shiva worshipers of you know kumara swami worshipers of vinayaka worshipers of baba worshipers of so these are all the religions okay our religion is to worship ayappa our religion is to worship baba our religion is to worship x y z but krishna is telling in the next verse sarva dharman parityajya sarva dharman all dharmas that you think as dharma you created as dharma are your four fathers or fathers have created as dharma give up all give up all maam ekam sharanam vraja surrender unto me so a, a, a person who is in less intelligent also can understand this statement very clearly right give up all other activities don't worship anybody else that all are not going to give you any spiritual progress it might be giving some piousness pious credit and that will help you to take a birth in good family next next life but if you really want a moksha if you really want a supreme god if you want to get a supreme bliss then what you have to do is surrender unto me krishna is telling surrender to whom me me means krishna so he is he is not giving any ambiguity here to understand whom to surrender because again so called philosophers will understand 
you know me means differently krishna is not telling to surrender to him he is telling to surrender to paramatma in him <laughs> or maybe he is telling surrender to somebody is they will say they might be saying so many things but krishna is directly telling surrender to me a two handed krishna's form he is telling to a living entity like us <coughs> right arjuna is a living entity krishna is a god a god is telling to living entity a supreme instruction he is giving become my devotee worship me okay and offer your homage to me this is what krishna is expecting us to do and this is the most confidential knowledge that's why in the whole bhagavad gita this particular shloka comes twice manmana bhava madbhakto madhyaji maam namaskur out of all 700 shlokas if any shloka is repeated twice that shloka is this in ninth chapter also we get this shloka okay so generally um if you if you have a costly item valuable item where will you keep huh almara or you will put it on the uh, tv table the diamond ring will you put it in the uh, dining table no you will put it in almara right in almara also what will you do there is a locker in the locker also what will you do you will put it in a small box or something and you lock the box then you put the locker lock the locker and then, then what you will do then the almara also you will lock and almara keys where will you keep <laughs> secret <laughs> so that means the most valuable thing is there in the center of where you cannot find it right most secret only the owner can know <laughs> only dear one can know okay so maybe wife can tell to husband and husband can tell to wife but not even to anybody else okay that's why krishna has mentioned this particular verse in the center of bhagavad gita manmana bhava mad bhakto out of 700 shlokas so 349th shloka 350th shloka is this manmana bhava mad most secret <laughs> most treasure i would say treasure of bhagavad gita is there in the center of the bhagavad gita and the same thing he is repeating in the 18th chapter to conclude that this is what i am telling you to do krishna is giving judgment right at the end he is concluding 18th chapter he is repeating that that is most important the center shloka that i mentioned in bhagavad gita is most important okay so we should become devotee of krishna we should worship krishna we should offer to krishna and we should pay obeisances to krishna we should chant krishna this is the most confidential knowledge if you cannot do this and do anything else he is not bhakti that is the definition of bhakti by krishna okay so then what did he say give up all abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me i shall deliver you from all sinful reactions do not fear this is my promise he is saying krishna is telling krishna is promising can there be any other authenticity that you need for the promise because krishna directly spoken bhagavad gita and krishna is directly telling i am promising you i will deliver you so you might be thinking what will happen to my baba whom i am worshiping he might be angry on me okay what will happen if i stop worshiping durga she might be angry on me what will happen if i stop worshiping seva he might be angry on me we might be thinking all these things but krishna is telling all devi devatas are my servants if you are a servant of somebody and if i am serving your master will you be happy or not you also want to serve i was i also serving the same person will you be happy or not will be happy even he is also serving him okay to whom you are serving he is going and serving krishna so now if we directly serve krishna then he will be happy thank god my devotee is mature now he will think <laughs> the demigod <laughs> that demigod will think thank god he got some knowledge today thank god he has become krishna devotee now so he will he will pray krishna saying that finally my devotee has come to you <laughs> he will be very happy so that's why krishna said 
if you want to water to a tree where will you water roots not to the leaves not to the branches not to the trunk what will happen if you start offering water to only branches only uh, leaves and only trunk what will happen tree will die in 10 days 20 days if you don't water to the roots that in the same way if you surrender to krishna the branches like devatas the leaves like devatas the fruits like devatas will also be nourished because you give water to roots right obviously the tree will be nourished so devi devatas also will be happy when you worship krishna so so we should not have any doubt on this okay so there is no doubt on this next for the one who explains this supreme secret to the devotees pure devotional service is guaranteed and at the end he will come back to me so what is krishna promising a person who explains this supreme secret to the devotees he is more dear to krishna and he is promising that that person will come back to me so if you all want to become more dear to krishna and if you all want to become more close to krishna and if you want to get krishna in the abode of krishna then you should also preach you should also give this supreme knowledge to others krishna will be happy you don't have to do anything you don't have to do any devotional service other than preaching if you can preach okay this is also bhakti preaching is also bhakti krishna is telling go and preach people about the supreme secret what he said supreme secret confidential most confidential knowledge man mana bhava mad bhakto madhya ji mam namaskara if you can teach others and convince them that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead and convince them they have to surrender to krishna then krishna will like you more and he is guaranteeing you the pure devotion and he is guaranteeing you to take him back take you back to krishna that is the promise that krishna is giving but you might be telling that you know prabhu ji i cannot speak like the way you speak i cannot teach the way like others can teach first of all i don't understand although i believe i don't understand the philosophy which i can explain to others but how can i become more dear to krishna i want to become more dear to krishna and i want to be loved by krishna i want to love krishna i want to get a pure devotion the way krishna is telling that he want to give but i don't have the talent to explain i don't have that talent to preach i don't have those contacts to go and talk okay then how can i become more dear you don't have to do the preaching if you cannot but at least there is a bhagavad gita here you can make this bhagavad gita reach many people this is easy right if you can give bhagavad gita to somebody distribute bhagavad gita to somebody you are preaching it's preaching a person who is reading bhagavad gita will understand krishna is supreme personality of godhead that is because of you it is happening so if you distribute bhagavad gita books also you become more dear to krishna that's why in every festival days especially in vaikuntha ekadashi or maybe in janmashtami or maybe in any festival days we keep a book counter and distribute to people and we ask devotees to come and volunteer for distribution so that they also get this mercy they also get loved by krishna and okay. they also become more dear to krishna there is no selfishness or business in distributing bhagavad gita it's a pure devotion is what we uh, we expect okay distributing bhagavad gita is a devotional service making bhagavad gita reach many people so that everybody will become uh, will get this you know most secret knowledge if everybody can get most secret knowledge everybody can become krishna's dear devotee then what is uh, what else we need right this is the ultimate uh, happiness that we can get okay that's the reason we all are trying to do that okay we are preaching we are um, all the way spending one and a half hour time in you know giving this knowledge 
and participating in this uh, kirtan all these things is to make people understand krishna is supreme god and our aim of our devotion is krishna nothing else okay next this is done right sarva guhyata mambuya shunu me paramam vachahan ishto sime drudamiti tato vakshami te hitam because you are my very dear friend i am speaking on to you the supreme this is over over no i am going back is it okay so now arjuna is speaking after knowing everything so we we, we came to the last just one or two verses okay now arjuna is speaking when after hearing everything and after also knowing what is concluded by krishna what arjuna is speaking is more important okay so for us to get the essence of what we should do also we will understand arjuna vacha nasto moha smrutir labdha tva prasadham maya achyuta स्थितोस्म गेह क्ये वचन तव क्ये वचन तव दिस इज अ मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड इन भगवद्गीता क्ये वचन तव मीन ई एक्ट अकॉर्डिंग टू युवर इंस्ट्रक्शन दिस इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दट वर्ड ई एक्ट अकॉर्डिंग टू युवर इंस्ट्रक्शन वेन गुरु टीच एवरीथिंग and after listening to everything if i act according to my own will then that is not the real knowledge that we are actually using in our life right krishna has told many things and he has also concluded and now krishna arjuna is telling i will act according to your instructions karishye vachanam tava that's why krishna is saying you are my guru and i surrender down to you and you have instructed me and i follow your instructions in the beginning i don't know what i have to do i i i don't even want to fight but i don't know whether not fighting is right or not not right also okay but now arjuna is telling i will do what you said what did arjuna, what did krishna say krishna did not tell to renounce krishna told to do the action and offer the result to me that means what uh, arjuna does not want to fight but krishna is telling to fight and offer the results to krishna right that means arjuna is accepting to fight now okay initial uh, initially arjuna situation is completely different from the current arjuna situation right that's what we need to understand so my dear krishna who oh infallible one my illusion is now gone my illusion is now gone i have regained my memory in the initial you, you just try to correlate this verse with the initial situation before even arjuna was listening to bhagavad gita there he said i am in illusion there he said i am not remembering anything there he said i don't know what to do now he is reverse he is telling here what he is telling my illusion is gone i have regained my memory by your mercy i am now firm and free from doubts earlier he was having he, he said right i don't know what is right what is wrong that means he is in doubt now he is telling i don't have any doubt okay and i am free from i am firm i am firm now earlier he was not firm the gandhi bhav, bhav was dropped and he could not even stand he is shivering okay he was not firm in uh, you know fighting so now he said i am firm and uh, now i will act according to your instructions okay so complete situation changed arjuna is now ready to fight that means if we also are in a situation where we don't know what to do we we don't find a path ahead and uh, we are in depression we might be in distress depression Dep- in depression we 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 in the same situation where arjuna was right that's a depression okay then we should take bhagavad gita we should understand what we have to do we should also regain our memory what is the real memory real memory is not to hanker for material desires right so real memory is that you understand that you are servant of krishna that is the real memory 
so when you understand that you are servant of krishna you will act as per krishna's instructions that's what arjuna is telling i will act as per your instructions so he is regaining in his memory means he understood now that he is a servant of krishna that's why he is going to follow the instructions of krishna now now this is a final shloka last shloka first shloka started with dhritarashtra right and dhritarashtra was anxious to know what uh, pandavas and kauravas are doing in kurukshetra battlefield right so while he was asking that question we understood maybe again from next week again we will start bhagavad gita from verse by verse we will start then we will analyze the dhritarashtra's character from the first shloka then we will understand what is the intention of uh, dhritarashtra while speaking that uh, particular first verse okay so in that verse he said uh, we, the intention is that you know kauravas should win and for that what kauravas and pandavas are doing in the battlefield he is anxious to know that okay and uh, by any chance uh, pandavas um, might say that they compromise or maybe because of the influence of the battlefield the dharmakshetra right the influence of dharmakshetra they might uh, uh, you know they might say that you know we want we don't want to fight if they don't fight then what will happen kauravas will not get kingdom they might have to share the whole kingdom or maybe some part of the kingdom they should give it to pandavas if they don't fight if they fight then my my sons are 100 and uh, pandavas are only 5 my sons will will definitely win and uh, my sons uh, Uh, you know army is 11 akshohini and pandavas army is only 9 akshohini 9 only right no, 7 akshohini so 7 akshohini so definitely the strength of the kauravas is more so definitely kauravas will win so at any cost this war should not be stopped this is the intention of um dhritarashtra and also when sanjaya told him that uh, this is the arjuna situation these are the symptoms that arjuna is exhibiting and he dropped his bow then dhritarashtra must have felt very happy right the great warrior the, the person whom we cannot defeat nobody can defeat arjuna for that matter okay and such a person has dropped his gandiva then almost kauravas won <laughs> this is the feeling that dhritarashtra is in for such dhritarashtras you know excitement now sanjaya is telling so that you don't have to be happy listen to what i'm saying <laughs> okay so indirectly is telling yatra yogishwara krishno yatra pardo danurdarah tatra sri vijayor putihi druva nitir matir mama wherever there is krishna the master of all mystics and wherever there is arjuna the supreme ang- arch archer there will also certainly be the opulence victory extraordinary power and morality that is my opinion so now now sanjaya is telling don't be so happy now arjuna is back <laughs> okay arjuna is back and no one thing wherever there is a krishna wherever there is arjuna victory will definitely be there that means pandavas will win okay towards the end of bhagavad gita sanjaya is telling to dhritarashtra so this is the conclusion so let us all understand that supreme lord is krishna and our supreme goal can be achieved only by worshiping krishna okay so that worship the the, the worship of krishna the pure devotional service to the krishna can be done can be started with our tongue the service that we can do to krishna with the tongue is more you know prominent or important than the service that you can do with any other uh, you know senses that you have okay what you can do with your tongue huh? chanting. chanting and eating <laughs> tasting prasada also is a service to krishna okay if you take prasada also it is a devotion it is a devotional service so two things one easy and impo- easy thing and interesting thing that is uh, eating prasadam 
and the other one is chanting krishna maha mantra okay these two things are very important easy hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare how easy is this is it like veda mantra is it difficult to chant this mantra no difficult and this mantra can be chanted with our tongue and this will help us getting the love for krishna become a pure devotee for krishna you can surrender to krishna with this hare krishna maha mantra so that's why we all chant hare krishna maha mantra every time in shrimad bhagavatam first chapter of second canto it is mentioned that sukadev goswami told that my dear king if one is spontaneously attached to the chanting of the hare krishna maha mantra is it, it is to be understood that he has attained the highest perfectional stage okay it is mentioned if you chant hare krishna maha mantra that is the highest perfection and it is told by sukadeva goswami to parikshit maharaj in the second canto uh, verse number 11 chapter shrimad bhagavatam it is mentioned sukadeva goswami said so chanting hare krishna maha mantra is not a small thing okay we might be thinking there are so many vishnu sahasranamas we are thinking lakshmi sahasranamas we are thinking so many other sahasranamas that's not highest perfection compared to chanting hare krishna maha mantra okay it's a easy mantra yeah, and uh, easy to do so let's all chant hare krishna maha mantra every day and then have this holy name on your tongue every time so that you are at a perfect stage thank you very much hare krishna vancha kalpata rupyasya krupa sindhu bhyeva cha patitanam pavane bhyo vishnu vibhyo hare krishna